matter what you're trying to launch next year, or heck, this year, this month, whatever, launching can be overwhelming. It can be confusing. It can be lonely. It's really easy to make a lot of mistakes. I certainly have. I have went through years and years of failure, you know, learning experiences, let's say, before I got to a point where I was having consistent, repeatable success with my launches. So I wanted to share with you today three mistakes and three kind of golden rules that I use to guide my launches and just to keep my online business in check. These three sort of golden rules or pillars are also the key pillars to the Online Business Launch Lab Accelerator as well, which we just launched, we just opened the doors to. Class starts in January. I'm gonna leave the link down below if you want more info on what this program is all about, but in short, it's an eight week accelerator program. We meet every single week on a live call and work through different lessons related to your digital product or service or your coaching program. It's kind of a hybrid between a group coaching program, an online course, and a lab where you'll actually be doing things. You'll be assigned different projects to get your, your dream online business up and launched. So again, I'm really excited about it and I hope to see some of you in there. I'll leave it down below, but for now, let's get into these three tips. Okay, so the first mistake that I see a lot of people making, I've certainly made, I've had my times with it, is we are just like this. We're just like looking all around, shiny object syndrome. We are trying to do all of the things and you need you need to choose a focus. It is nearly impossible to try to launch a new service while launching a new course, while you know creating a new freebie, while developing a new content strategy for TikTok. Like it is really hard to do all of those things well. Now, of course, somebody's done it. Somebody's gonna comment. I've done it, I'm doing it. Listen, me too. But that doesn't mean that it's sustainable or that it's something that I would recommend. It's funny because when we're looking for opportunities, whether it's new clients, whether it's you know finding people to take our course or watch our videos or whatever it is, I think we have this innate thing that tells us to go wider, cast a wider net because we need more people. But what you really want to do is actually narrow down who you're talking to. And this is what we mean when we say niche down. So as opposed to trying to be on every single platform or try to do a course and an ebook and a service and this and that, free stuff, you really need to choose one of each of those things to start with and to really put your focus in. You're gonna confuse your audience if one day you're talking about, I don't know, Facebook ads and the next day you're talking about organic Pinterest marketing and then the next day you're talking about NFTs, right? Like you need to choose a focus area where people will get overwhelmed, you're gonna get burnt out and you're not gonna be able to do all the things. So with your online business, go narrow. Start with one signature product, service, whatever it is, go all in on that. And also when it comes to launch time and development, you need to put all of your energy into that. If you're gonna be joining OBLL, we don't want you in there working on a service, a course, and a coaching program at the same time. The first step of that program is saying, this is what I wanna work on over these next eight weeks. It's not gonna be all three, it's just not. <laughs> the second mistake a lot of people make with their online business is that they fall victim to copying. I don't know a better word or phrase to use for it, but you just need to be true to you. It sounds so cliche. I know this advice sounds so cliche, but it is true. It really is true. People buy from people and what wins them over truly is your personality or something about you, something in your journey, something uh, with your style of you know content or whatever it is, something about your delivery not somebody else's. And I know it's like the hardest thing to hear because, you know, I look up to people, of course, I've been influenced by people. They resonate with me so, so much. I love them so much. Maybe I should just do a show just like theirs. Maybe I should style my hair just like theirs. Maybe I should wear outfits just like theirs. But it's important to remember that you are not your own target audience in all cases. Sometimes we fall into both, but in a lot of cases, we don't. And it's also important to keep in mind that there are always gonna be lovers and haters of everybody. Some of the most popular people in my space, like the business and entrepreneurship space, 
They're, you know, very extroverted, very animated. And a lot of people love that. And I respect that. But on the other hand, a lot of people tell me I watch your videos because you're not screaming at me all the time. And your voice is really calming. Then of course I get people on my comments sometimes who are like, wow, you're boring. I don't like you. So of course you're going to get both sides of that. But I want to talk to those people who are attracted to me without me having to try too hard, without me having to try to be somebody else. You know, I actually just posted something on Twitter recently that I don't like to open up, by the way, if you guys haven't noticed that I'm very, um, I don't know, unless we're talking one-on-one, -on -one, I will open up about anything to you if we're talking one-on-one, -on -one. but when it comes to public platforms, I don't really like to share a lot about my personal life. Um, I just never want anyone to feel like I'm trying to make them feel bad for me or anything like that. Cause I'm truly so happy, lucky, all of that. But I posted something about, uh, grief and about my dad who died a few years ago. And I actually got so many DMS. I was like crying the next day, reading my DMS on Instagram about how many people said, you know, I really relate to that. I just lost my mother or my father's really sick and entrepreneurship is it's really hard in this season and hearing somebody talk about that really made me feel like, okay, if she can do it, I can do it and things like that. So my point is bring in little pieces of your story because nobody else has, has lived exactly your life. Nobody else has your exact unique combination of experiences and projects that you've worked on. That's going to be what attracts people to you. I promise it is not going to be copying somebody's course name and just, you know, changing one word or copying somebody's exact color palette and just changing one color or, you know, copying someone's photo or YouTube thumbnail, basically frame for frame. I promise it's not a good look. And the third mistake that I see a lot of people make, myself included sometimes, is not looking at the numbers. And by numbers, I mean the financials in particular. Other numbers too, other data, other KPIs. I did a video all about what the heck a KPI is if you wanna check that out. But um, really, profitability is key. Okay. That's the main point that I want to drive home here. A profitable business truly is a happy business. A lean business is a happy business. I think sometimes we want to legitimize ourselves as entrepreneurs. I know I was in this, I think it was like in March or February of 2020, I applied for an office space. Luckily, something in my gut was telling me do not sign. And I'm so glad I didn't because what happened in March of 2020, I wouldn't have even been able to go into that office space for months and months and months. But you know, yes, I wanted it. I, I did. And I still think it would have been cool. But I think a lot of it was that I didn't really feel legitimate as an entrepreneur in that stage. I kind of felt like, you know, I need to leave my house every day, put on real clothes every day, grab my little briefcase, my computer bag and go to the office every day. You know, I need to be able to have clients come in and see me work and know that I am a real legitimate business owner when really, I mean, I've made so much more money here in this little tiny apartment office. And people do this with a lot of things, right? We buy the flashy car. We hire all of the people just to say we have a team of people. We get the office. We, um, you know, sign up for the way too expensive coaching program just to say we're a part of their network. And listen, you know, your life, your goals, what's going to make you feel successful. What's going to help you better than I do. But my point is don't do those things just to do them. You know, I've seen people hire teams of five, 10, 20, and then be asking how to take out a loan to pay them. The great thing about online business is that you just don't have to do that. You really don't have to do that. The startup costs are really, really low for an online business. The staffing needs in the beginning, I mean, depending on what you're doing can be zero. You can bootstrap most everything. I certainly did. I bootstrapped for years, I did everything myself. I still do so much in my business by myself, even though I do have a small team of people. And by small team, you know, you guys, I might be shocked to even hear just how small it is. I think sometimes people think, you know, everybody who makes a certain amount or who is on YouTube or whatever has like 20 people working for, for them. And I certainly do not. So knowing where to invest, knowing what can wait and just putting a little elbow grease in at the beginning, it's not always going to be super fun. I mean, I spent a lot of long nights, bootstrapping, doing design work that I shouldn't have been really doing, but I did that. I put in that work so I could turn a profit. I could build up a nice, healthy cash reserve in the business 
So that way I could hire people. So that way I could start investing in, you know, a co-working space or some business travel or more education or whatever it is that I really needed and wanted. Okay, this one is kind of a bonus, but I also wanna say trust the process. This is really one of my key pillars specifically for OBLL. I've designed the curriculum in this course to go in a certain order that, you know, there's gonna be things that some of you just don't wanna learn. Some of you are like, I'm not a math person. I don't wanna learn about finances. That's why I hire an accountant. But trust the process that I put it in there for a reason, that these are things really that a CEO or an online business owner should know. And even if you don't feel like you're gonna use them today, you might wanna put them in your back pocket and you might be referencing back to this lesson years later. It's also built in a certain order. You might be thinking, I just wanna get ready to just launch. I don't wanna talk about operations. I don't wanna talk about you know purpose and all these things, but it's really important to understand your why before diving in to selling and things like that. So for OBLL, for those of you who are joining, definitely trust the process, but also just in general in business, trust the process. It is messy. Progress is messy. It is like, you know, a roller coaster. This year, I feel really lucky to say, you know, this is our best year in business ever. I think we're gonna f at least four, maybe even five X what we did last year, which is absolutely nuts. So I feel very lucky about that. But I also know that business has seasons and that, you know what, I worked a lot this year. Let's just say it. I worked a lot this year. I truly had a, a hustle year kind of unintentionally. It was just because, you know, the world was still kind of weird and what else was I supposed to do? But knowing that my personal life is gonna have some changes next year, we're building a house and you know, who knows what else is gonna change in my personal life. I might not have another 4X, 5X year. I might have a 2X year. I might have a 0.5 year, right? And, and that's okay. Knowing your goals, your motivations is so important. And if you can really know yourself and know what you're looking for, know what you want and understand that business is a bit of a roller coaster. But if you have some of these foundations set in place, you know, you're keeping a good eye on your financials. You are really monitoring your data. You are feeling good about the work that you're doing. It's going to be okay. And you shouldn't be blindsided by anything. You shouldn't be um, you know, hurting, if you will, regardless of those different waves, <laughs> I don't know what this is, uh, that you're gonna be riding. So those are my four best tips, four sort of golden rules of online business. I hope that this was helpful. And again, I'd love to see some of you in the Online Business Launch Lab Accelerator. I'm gonna leave a link down below where you can learn all about the program. We're gonna be talking about everything from purpose to content marketing, to business operations, to of course, mapping that launch, selling, getting clients, finding clients, attracting clients, and so much more. And it's just gonna be a lot of fun. I will be back with a new video on Wednesday. Be sure to click the subscribe button and ring the bell if you wanna be notified when I post a new video. My socials are all linked down in the description box as well. I'm at the Latasha James everywhere and I will see you next time. Bye.